<coughs> I tried to get the coughing out of the way before I started the stream, but you know how that goes. Okay. And I'll see when people show up over here in the chat window. They don't have to chat. They, you know, most of the, most of my regulars do, but we get people who just hang out too. Anyway, uh, hey, here we are with the stream and it's, oh my God, it's Sunday already. I've got so much to get done for tomorrow and I've had such a crummy weekend. Car troubles, yay, and the cold, of course, still going on. Um, what we're working on today is going to be the first scene of episode three of where the hell am I? No, of episode three, uh, episode four of the teeth within. So we were breaking up scenes with voices yesterday. And, uh, for anyone who's joining us, I have sitting here with me in my illustrious studio. Hi, Yargion. Hey, I've got, um, I've got Renaud LaBeouf, who plays Ken in uh, Fatal Girl and a ton of other things in all my other shows. They actually recognize your voice, you know. Oh, dear. <laughs> They're like, hey, is that Ken? <laughs> no, that's, that's not Ken. That's somebody else entirely. Yeah. Mm. But he, 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 because I've had car troubles, he took mercy on me and brought me some food, and I invited him to stay for the live stream because I figured... Enough of the people here would probably recognize his voice. Um, and uh, so far we've got Yargi on. We might have a couple other people show up. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's usually somewhere between one and three who take part in the, in the, the, the um, uh, I know there's a word, chat room. My brain is just not working today. And... Um, and you know, everybody kind of drops in and out. So, oops, I know what I forgot. I forgot to open up my script. Just one second. This is going to be a very short scene because, see, that works. Hmm. Oh, well, I've been having issues with my laptop too. Everything's been going this weekend. It's been just crazy. Okay, this is a scene that's more more sound effects than it is voices, but we'll settle out the voices first. So, uh, first Gerald, and uh, as we've been working on, oh, I do, Yargion? Okay, cool. It's good to know when I get it right, because I know there's always, it's so hard on the internet to know how anybody pronounces anything sometimes. Um, and of course, you have to understand that I have no idea who you are as far as on any other platform because I can't keep track of everybody's many. I can barely keep track of my many pseudonyms, but about anybody else's. Get Jane. Get Jane. Mm. Get Jane. Just a second. Get Jane. Uh, I think I'm going to take that one. <coughs> this is all about the decision-making process of how exciting it is to, to choose which lines are going to make the cut and which ones are not. You mean not Scene all one. lines are absolutely gold? <gasps> nope. <gasps> nope, not everything. There's a lot of times you have... Yeah, well, and sometimes I try to save them for the blooper reel, too, of course. <laughs> Oi! Oh, sir! Okay. And... Oi! Oh! Uh... Wow, that's loud. Um... Oh, you look spared, Donnain. I'll put that on. <laughs> you look spared, Donnain. Oops, I'm fiddling. You look fair, Donnie. Oh, hey, Haddock. How you doing? I was just telling everybody that in the studio with me, I've actually got Renaud LaBeouf, who is Ken in Fatal Girl and other stuff. Um, I mean, he's in tons of stuff. Uh, here, he... Uh... You sit. You're Hold only on. able to keep your feet. Kettle first, Jane next. She takes less time to get rolling. <coughs> And, uh, you know, I figured since, uh, <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> Gosh darn it. I was doing really well, actually. And then all of a sudden, I started coughing again. Mm. It is. It's been a heck of a weekend. I mean, between car trouble and everything else, it has been just like, ah. Um, Quizzical Haddock says hi from England. Oh, hello there. <laughs> and uh, he's like, unfortunately, I don't have a second set of headsets, so you can maybe hear him in the background of my of my microphone, and I will relay any comments or questions to him. Um, okay, now this scene has very little dialogue, but actually a lot of... It does. I know I'm not allergic to you guys, I promise. No, it's just I'm, me and I'm here. <coughs> <coughs> I made the mistake of eating pizza last night because I was desperate for something that delivered and today he took pity on me and brought food because my car isn't working. So, um, and then I conned him into sticking around for this. <laughs> I know, I know, twist your arm. Time to ch chat with fr with. <laughs> with fans okay so now this is actually going to be a slightly tricky scene to build despite the fact that it's got very little in the way of uh sounds um let's see let me start putting together some sound effect files here um ba -ba 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 -ba. No, I said open a new window, you f stupid thing. Thank you. Mm. It's being a pain in the ass. <coughs> or I just have lost all control, which wouldn't surprise me at all at this point. It has just been that kind of weekend. Okay, let's, I guess I'll start a new folder for scene one. I need <coughs> I need to start with some bare footprints. I mean bare footsteps. <laughs> bare footprints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. What does this sound like? Good enough. Then I need some no, go away, go away, wrong folder. What is that anyway? Unfinished. Yeah, I just realized I'm like, why is that on my taskbar? Okay, we got feet, we got for one. Okay, I got feet. Next thing I'm gonna need is some door noises. So I'm going down to wood. My sorting process is very odd, but it I, I keep track of it. Everybody is welcome to sort their own. I was looking at, um, yesterday I was on, oh, darn, it's on the other computer. Uh, somebody, I think it was um, David who was asking about sound effect files to start with. And there was a pretty decent one being offered on, I think, Pro Sound Effects for, like, 50 bucks. I mean, the problem is it always depends on what you're going to use. And you always find you need something much more unusual and difficult than anything else you already have. And it's just, you know, you never get what you want. Okay, what I'm looking for, I need... Um, I need an open and close... I'll go with that one. Uh, oh, there you are, David. Oh, hey, David. As I was telling everybody else, I've got Renaud LaBeouf here in the studio with me. That's Ken from Fatal Girl. Hello again. <laughs> I, can you guys hear him in the background there? <laughs> uh, I don't have a second headset with a microphone. I w this was a, a very spur-of-the-moment thing. But... Um, what is, that's a knock. What does that sound like? Oh, it's not a knock. It's a something. Okay, I need a, 
Ah, shoot. I need a front door. What is that? So, no. I used to be I knew all these, but I'm working on it. Um, well, I need a knock. Okay, I'll take that. Oh, you can hear a bit? Cool. Yeah, um, and uh, let's see. That's a doorbell, door knock. We have a door knock. Um, a chain is not appropriate, I believe, but uh, if I had a latch, it would be. Darn it. Uh, not what I want. This is where it gets a little tricky. Um... Door. So many different kinds of doors I've collected over the years. Um, Cause I need a big door. I need a, well, open front door. That does work. And uh, still under wood noises, I need a hmm. not quite. Oh, I know what I want under metal. Oh, yeah, no problem, David. It's, you know, there's no requirement that you show up. You've, you, you, you this is, it's nice when you do. I like when everybody's here, but if you got to do other things, it's totally fine. You know that. Oh, I think that'll work. Um, clang, clang, sound design, squeak. I want... Yes. Mm, a little too much. Way too much. Come on, just give me a real latch on a wind on a. Uh. Oh no, not a combination lock. That's silly. Oh, I already got that. Mm, fine. Um, I need... <laughs> do what you gotta do. This is gonna take a little bit while I compile my effects. Every time, gotta pick up whatever effects are for the scene. It's, you know, some of them I can carry over from scene to scene, but it's my own fault for writing so many difficult things and I need oh I need his feet too um I think I've still got that around though let's see no but it's around somewhere um No. Oh, it's so easy to get everything out of order. Um, FX. We had a feet file, didn't we? I could have sworn we did. Well, fine. Timmy's first animal. You say that every time. <laughs> You're just jaded about people. Oh wait, this is what I wanted. No, it's already open. I swear I closed it. Oh, well, I guess I didn't. Right, okay, so now I think I have what I need. 
this is actually a, a surprisingly, <coughs> pardon me, a surprisingly complicated scene for being one that's very, very short. And let me put all the effects in, into one file here, or at least get them close into one file, because what's happening, this is opening up episode four. We're coming off of, oh, okay, you've just got the whole Timmy series that you're making up. <laughs> um, this is coming off of episode four where in, you know, Jane had the, uh, the um, surprise guest in the afternoon and Gerald has spent most of the evening being, getting the sales pitch. And after that, he comes here and it's late at night by this point. So it's, uh, oh, I also need something in a nighttime track. Let me see. That may be a little tricky. Um, nighttime, nighttime, nighttime. Ah. Ambiance. Outdoors. There's a dog track. I'm particularly, I mean, a track with a, a dog in the distance that I'm particularly fond of. I think it'll work for this. Uh, nighttime, nighttime, nighttime. Oh, it's in a subdirectory. Night. crickets though yeah that could be that could be you could have crickets in victorian england at night it's not like there's a lot of noise around <laughs> now all of the sound effects are cricket bats no not that kind of cricket <laughs> <coughs> that's a sticky wicket all right now i can open up Um, go back to my, come here, come here, TFX41, I'll import all the other tracks here, so I've got all these in one file, and the first thing I do is I make them all mono from stereo, because I hate stereo effects, well, I mean, I, I need to make, actually, I need to make a file for somebody that um, wanted to know. I had somebody inquiring, or it came up in a conversation somewhere about uh, stereo effects. And one of the things I hate about um, them is when you get stereo effects that are, um, uh, this is just going to hear for a second as the door is opened, but I, I just want to get it in here. Um, but stereo effects, which are like footsteps where one foot's on one side of the stereo track and one foot's on the other, because I heard this in a video game recently. And I was trying to explain to somebody why it was bad and what was wrong with it. And I need to make up an example for it, and I keep forgetting to. I've been so caught up with this being sick crap that it's just, just driving me crazy. Anyway, so what I've, the first thing, the first sound is the door knocker. And I'll start that. I'm going to, just going to leave the, the, the cricket track till I can abridge it, but it's going to be muted. Well, I'm going to try and keep it muted. It never stays. So we've got. I'm going to put two sets of the door knocker in. Gerald's kind of disturbed by the whole sales pitch thing. So he's coming here as a bit of an emergency. Now the door knocker and everything else <coughs> is pretty much way off to the right. This is the, um, the front door of the house. And in fact, the door knocker, we're in a different room. We're in Annie's bedroom. Now, why did that? Oh, no. Low pass. Duh, Julie. I want to run the high low pass. How's that sound? And then take the volume down to make it sound like it's far off. Okay. So, yeah, the low pass makes it sound like it's in another room. The volume down makes it sound like it's farther away. And then moving it off to the left or moving it off to a side places it 
even farther away. So Annie's first line um, is going to stand by itself. And she's, I'm just going to keep it simple and put her far right as her, because she's woken up by this. Mm, probably in the middle of it. Oh! Whoops. Come here. No. <laughs> and, oh. I forgot about that. I need a, I need a sound of fabric. Where did I have fabric noises? Here we go. Because she's got to get out of bed. Stop that. Don't be annoying. Break uh, acrobatic grace. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Cause yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, because Annie is so graceful. <laughs> um, but I just have the sound. I have to have show that, you know, she's woken up. Um, here's our sound effect file. That she's getting out of bed. So, you know, as, as you picture the scene, a lot of times you end up realizing more effects that you can add to make it sound more realistic. Now, this is in her area. I mean, in this part of the soundscape. So she's getting up. She... Oops, footsteps. Takes the bare footsteps. Uh, and is going to have to go through a door. And then goes to the front door. So, like I said, this is mostly a sound scene rather than a, a voice scene. Um, I'm going to break the footsteps in two because she's got to go through a door. I don't want to make it sound like she's walking a long way. I mean, this is a fairly small flat, but at the same time, she's going to, oh, um, I think I'll just take that that door open. I don't think she'll close her door as she goes. I mean, what do you do when somebody knocks on the door in the late, after you've gone to bed at least? I mean, it may not be late in the night. I can't even have the canary up because they'd, they'd put the, they'd put a shade on the canary for the night. And that has to be high pass filtered because, whoops, because there's noise on that door. Okay, hold on. I don't want to just blank it out because part of it is the sound of the door, but there's enough background noise on that that I had to fade it out so that it wouldn't suddenly cut out. Um, you know, I can use it around the door but it just cutting it out at any point would have sounded wrong, so I faded it out instead. Okay, bring this back down a bit. I probably should have eaten a little more before I started. How silly. Okay, um, I just get to talking. You know how it is. Okay, um, door, footsteps. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and give her a couple more footsteps here. And I'm going to take the footsteps down a little bit. She's not that big. You know, I mean, Annie's a big girl, but she's not a giant <laughs> stomping around. And she's trying to be quiet. She doesn't want to wake up Jane if she doesn't have to. I thought you said she was Hagrid's goddaughter. Yeah, Hagrid's goddaughter. No. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so what I've got now, uh, let me move this to top so I can get that out of my way. Um, I've got, that's the door. This is, that's the front door that she's going to open, so we can place that. Um, 
it's going to be somewhere in here. We'll have moved over to this side of the track by that point. I know I usually move things in a. I'm, I'm going to be doing the full movement in a second file, but that's over there. What I'm trying to create, and I'm hoping I can make it sound right, is the idea that she gets to the door and she opens like a peephole and to look out before opening the door because it's not a great neighborhood, first off, and you don't open the door to strangers in the middle of the night. You just don't. Oops. So I've got these two sounds to work with that I wanted to use. And so let's see. Take them both down just a skosh and put them one after the other. Then I can place the uh, voice to go with it. Let's see. Let me see how it sounds so far from the start. Oh, I gotta ignore that one. Hold on, put that one down. Okay, and then she opens the peephole and and realizes who is there. So that goes there. Oi! Oh, sir! And then I should have another lock here because really the peephole lock is not the same as the door lock. Didn't I have another lock? That's not much of a lock. Um, well, I will create a new lock. That's the thing is, I mean, you got to make, some things have to sound at least reasonably realistic or, you know, it's like you're not going to have somebody's house where there's no lock. Oh, shut up. There is so... That's a common message, especially if you accidentally go off the edge of a, a track to when you're highlighting it to try and, no, I meant up, 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 silly thing, to try and uh, select it. If you go off the edge, it seems to think that you are uh, selecting blank space and then it doesn't know how much room to make for it. That sounds pretty reasonable. Um, and uh, and this is where, of course, uh, I'm gonna wait to change the outdoors the outdoor sounds to fit this until I'm absolutely sure where the door opening and closing are. Otherwise, it just leads to fiddling back and forth, and it gets more and more in to be a pain in the butt. So, let me reduce this a little bit. She says... Oh, you look spared, Donane. I'll put her on. Get Jane. And I need... His footsteps here. Um, let's duplicate his track down here just so I have a blank track to stick some footsteps in. He's not barefoot. He's in shoes. Uh, no, let's just give him a few random steps. He's not walking a straight line. He's just stepping through a door. And, and it'll be about here. You look spared, Donane. I'll put care on. Get Jane. I'm going to move that back just a bit, and I'm going to speed it up. Again, um, I'm using, you use change tempo, not change speed. 
Change speed is the one that changes things to chipmunks. Change tempo speeds things up you without... Who looks fair, Jolene? I'll put that on. Who looks... <laughs> yeah. Change speed is the one that changes things to chipmunks or slows them down. While the uh, change tempo is the one that just speeds it up without changing the sound quality. And then I need a door shut. That's what I need, a big door shut. Have I got one? This is opening. Um, door shut, 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 shut. No, those are all lock and keys. Let's see. Door shut. Yeah, that works. I'm going to take that volume down because that slams my ears, but at least I can put it in, back it up a little bit, and then volume it down. Get Jane. You sit. You're only able to keep your feet. Kettle first, Jane next. Sheep. And then I will put some of her footsteps here as she walks back towards center. Whoops. Over here, barefoots. And we'll see how it sounds. I, I have to make all the movements work. Whoops. Make all the movements stick before I do much. Uh, move that out. Okay, so here's the scene. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to save as because I don't want to completely destroy this before when I start um, when I start moving everything and mixing files. I want to have everything as is before I mix it. So first things first, um, let's see, it's a little complicated of a, of a scene to mix. That's why I want to be real careful with this. First thing I'm going to take Annie from her room and center that and mix it with that. So that I've got that track. We call it Annie One. I know what I'm saying. And <laughs> then we'll take uh oh my gosh. Uh this actually bit of Annie, she's gonna be moving again. So I'm gonna make that a track of its own along with her other footsteps here and mix those oh make them center and then mix them i always make them center first because otherwise they're going to mix into a stereo file too early no don't be a pain in the ass and mix those and that's annie three actually because the middle part is annie two oops and I can talk at the same time. So then we have, uh, I guess I can put Gerald and his footsteps into a track of their own. Because he moves a little bit. But it's, it's going to be, I could just make that an, a non-movement really. But I'm going to go ahead and let it be. And all of the rest of this can be mixed together into a track. And that's, oh no, I forgot to, I forgot to center them. Undo is your best friend, always, always. But as I've said so many times and I pound into everybody's head, undo is your friend, but once you shut the file, undo abandons you and you can't undo if you open the file and try back which is of course why I'm always making new copies of files so that if I do need to take a step back at some later date I actually have the option okay so we've got this to start with now this track with Annie in the middle is all 
at, we'll, we'll call it 80% left. And uh, Gerald's track is all 80% left. We're going to just pretend he moves there. I'm not going to make the, the slight movement of him stepping in the door be dramatic enough to really hear because he's just moving from like 80 to 70. It's not really going to show. But this one, this is Annie crossing the whole house. So I'm going to copy that. And I could do it in two stages and stop at the door. But I don't think I'm going to make it that convoluted because this is already a pretty convoluted scene. So I'm just going to do a straight shot fade out here and a straight shot fade in here. And that way she's moving from 80 right to 80 left. Come on. To get to the door here to open it. And the last bit, I'm just going to move her back to center as she talks here. So as she heads for the kitchen to um, put on a kettle. So she's going from, eight, stop that. She's going from 80 right, or 80 left, I mean, to, we'll, we'll give it just past center. So she's got a little bit more movement. So that fades out and it fades in from where she starts walking. Okay, now let's listen to this as it is and see how it sounds. I don't know if you can hear any of this at all. Okay, if some of it comes through the monitor. Get Jane. You sit. You're only able to keep your feet. Kettle first, Jane next. She takes less time to get rolling. That's pretty nice. The movement is very smooth on that. Now I can throw in the, the background noises. Now, when she opens the peephole is when we'll actually first hear it. And what I'll probably do is actually just... Uh, houses aren't soundproof. I think I'm just going to take it super way down up till that point, which would be just see what I can do with that and also low pass filter it very heavily because it's outdoors. So it's away. Whoops. Let's not, not so still gives us nighttime. Oi! Oh, sir. You look spared, Donnie. I'll put care on. Get Jane. You and then here where the door slams to the end of the file, and I'll cut off a lot of that. I'm going to do the same thing, which is the minus 15 and the low pass filter. So it's still, we still use it for the nighttime cue. Um, to, you know, to hear that it's nighttime, even though it's well outside the house. And then the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to put the room machine on everything, but I'm also going to change it as she moves into the hall. So uh, first I have that, which is everything mixed. Come on, just travel with me, you dumbass thing. Um, and that's minus 25. And then I put on the room machine. And then, and then low pass filter, but also everything from this point where she steps out into the hall. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you like it, how it's blending so far from how it, when she steps into the hall all the way to the end is actually going to turn into a second reverb track, which I'll mix and I'll do pretty much the same thing too, which is uh, volume minus 25. 
I'm not going to do the room machine. I'm going to do a uh, reverb and then do the low pass filter and we'll see how that sounds. Okay. Julie's all about the ambience. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm good at making everybody sound like they're in the same room, but also like they're in different rooms when they move. Really interesting when everybody's in different parts of the country or world. Yes. They all sound like they were done in the same script. It's true. I'm just awesome. <gasps> Jolene, I'll put Kettle on. Get Jane. You sit. You're only able to keep your feet. Kettle first, Jane next. She takes less time to get rolling. Cool. Now, you see, I took the reverb way down. Um, I felt that it was very heavy on this scene, but mm, that's why when you use the gain slider. But you can still hear the distance difference here as she's walking and then kind of steps out in the hall and it's got a different oh, oh sir it's got a whole different set of uh, uh it's the hall is a much bigger space than her room is and that way they sound right um yeah i think that's pretty much done and one more time through just to make sure I could add a third set of knocks. I mean, it's not like he knows she got up, but the audience doesn't really need that. He's not quite that <gasps> imperative. Oi! Oh, sir! Oh, you look spared, Jolene. I'll put Kettle on. Get Jane. You sit. You're only able to keep your feet. Kettle first, Jane next. She takes less time to get rolling. Okay. Here, you get a chance to listen to it on stereo. Just a second. I must let my special guest experience my wonderfulness. I've been experiencing that for years. <laughs> Absolutely amazed every time. Even back when she didn't know these tr these things uh, hadn't worked out all the tricks yet, I was still just beyond stunned. Now we get this. Wow. Oi! Oh, sir! Oh, you look spared, Jolene. I'll put Kettle on. Get Jane. You sit. You're only able to keep your feet. Oh, Kettle first, Jane next. She takes less time to get rolling. The fade, it's just... <laughs> it's, uh, stunned every bloody time. And she learned all this stuff. I mean, she like... I, I don't I don't know that there's folks who do this for a living and know half the tricks she's taught herself. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I just make it up. It just makes sense to me. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So we have one scene. One. Ha, 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 ha. For the new episode. <laughs> I'm still waiting on that. The professor isn't going to be able to record the replacement professor until Wednesday. So I'm kind of stuck till then to put either episode two or three out for good. But it's kind of good because I'm still so gruff that recording, I can record the credits, but it's just not sounding right. And it's so frustrating i know it's coming back my voice is but at the same time it's like i'm so tired of waiting because i need to get my books recorded i am so far behind on a bunch of books and it's driving me crazy um whoops i want to i also want to do a credits here i have the the credit file luckily i recorded all of this part the opening parts um, all at once so that I can just, uh, trade it out. Part two of a nine part series. Part four of a nine part series. 
And all it requires is that I just swap out this line right here. And so I can make the opening credits regardless of how rough my voice is at this point, as long as I... Part four of a nine-part serial. Part three of a nine-part So nine-part... See. Gotta pull it together so... Part four of a nine-part serial featuring... Pla okay. And then the opening credits. Whoops. I don't know why it's doing that. To me, looking at this, it's like she's reading The Matrix. <laughs> There's just a bunch of lines and dots. And I, I, I can look over them and say, okay, that part would be these words, and that would be the change. She just looks over it. Yeah, cut, cut, snip, bam. Okay, we're good. We're like, and after. After that, I'm supposed to turn the machine on, right? Okay, next part. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, you do get used to, to reading the sound waves. It is, it is actually, I mean, it's something Kim actually remarked upon about how it really actually becomes, you start seeing things in the sound waves once you've done it a lot. It takes a lot of practice, but, um, thank you. It is, it is, it's, it's weird how easily it works sometimes. And I will, f let's see, I don't want to have it all this long. I'm going to fade it out. I need to work out a final answer for how much I'm fading out stuff, but let's see. And here's one where obviously I can't start it on dialogue you know have the music run till the dialogue begins but i can start it closely with the knock not quite i gotta move it a little bit tighter good and this is uh Episode four, uh, final. Okay. And it's always kind of tricky when you're going from something loud like the music into something quiet like this scene, but it's a nice contrast. And I've... And once you get into the dialogue, the scene is as is a good loudness. I mean, it's not. Uh, I am gonna take the points down just a bit, but um, but it's so it's 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 going to be you know deceptively quiet for a bit. But there's enough noise to keep track of what's going on and that there is sound. One thing with going to complete silence always is that you're kind of going. Is is my machine stopped? <laughs> if your if your complete silence lasts too long, my MP3 player died. Yeah, you're like, wait, is this a break or am I deaf or is it just gone? Didn't pay your power bill, Doc. <laughs> um, I'm gonna open up the previous full file from. Well, we'll go back to. Might as well just go back to all the way to one and the finals and steal all the in-between breaks again because I should just put them in a file of their own, honestly, because um, that would actually be very clever. But, um, you know, um, and it'll take a minute. There we go. And uh, just get rid of all the scenes, but keep all the in-between music. Stop that. Because that way we've got all the in-between music to use and we lose that's the closing and opening credits and we'll get rid of that and that and this 
and and that's an extra track and just take all these uh, actually I don't want to blend them because then they'll be stuck into one if, if I if I do um, this to mix and render them then they become one single track and I don't want that so instead I'm going to just move them all oh you're just gonna be a pain in the ass aren't you she's the idea of the mix master she's got it absolutely perfect you know part way through and then another part way through and then and then and then at that point it's like you know the perfectionist will not stop until she actually okay it's airtime go but I've got, still got go no, no, no. That's Jack Kincaid. He's the perfectionist. I'm the one who's like, oh, it's 80% good enough. Nobody's going to notice that it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, she thinks that. Hey, you know, I can't have time. I See, this is the thing is, I don't like doing this enough to be that perfectionist. <laughs> I just don't care. I am the one who, I am the one who wants to just get it out. It just has to be good enough so people get it. So let's see. What's a good... <laughs> what is a good... No. No. I like, I like that one. Ominous. Sickies. Slightly ominous, but not pompous because those ones are pompous but ominous they all come from the same piece of music which is the funniest part sometimes it's all about what you find that works with music oh and now we've got wait a minute now we've got everything up there I can get rid of all these extra files I mean extra lines which is nice I like a clean screen Oh, come on. Memory doesn't... She that. takes less time to get rolling. Yeah, and I actually want that to start right on... The... She takes less time to get rolling. There we go. I know. It's awesome. I'm awesome. <laughs> I keep telling her this. She doesn't seem to believe it unless you are actually got an audience. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That doesn't work. This doesn't work. That doesn't work. Hey, everybody. Uh, Showtime. Yeah. Shit. And let's see if we can get one more scene done. We get, we, we, we tend to run late a lot because I'll do this. Um, the We're going back to episode four. Scene two is the murder scene. So it's an exciting scene. We're going to, we've got the police surgeon and the inspector in charge and the, the, uh, uh, constable. So. It looks like the poor fellow was beaten to death. I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Mm. Looks like the poor fellow was beaten to death. I think I like that, that take. Speaking of Jack Kincaid, <laughs> uh, he's so much fun to give these little wacky parts to, too. You know, because uh, he does some really interesting things. Now, um, okay, what I need. Five seconds of silence. No, uh, a little too big. He's first. Yeah, he's got a distinctive voice, Guardian of Memories. He definitely does. The funny thing is that <coughs> even though he plays a bajillion roles, you know, you, you start to pick him out no matter what. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm sure people start to recognize my voice any old place they hear it, which is funny to me. How many numbers are in a bajillion? How many numbers? <laughs> a lot. More than in a bajazzle. And let's see. Okay. 
we'll take this solo off. And... Maid found him when she came in to clean up, Inspector Drab, sir. That's her, next door. That's her, next door. That's her, next door. See, now here I've got a lot more lines to choose from, obviously, though it looks like Fields only gave me one copy of each, but I think that's fine. Um... Uh, yes, sir. But we'll get to do some choosing of, you know, our our our, our lines from Inspector Drab. Here. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Mm, one or two, one or two. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. I think I'll go with one. And... Again, you know, it's just experience gets you to where you know which version you're going to work with the best. But I, have a, I also have the idea in my head, more or less, of how I want Drab to be reacting and, and speaking. And a lot of times you don't... When you're the writer and the director, that helps a lot because you already Nothing. know... Nothing. Let me see a notebook. Nothing. Let me see a notebook. Nothing. Let me see a notebook. Now, I like this one, and I wish... And this may not be doable, simply because of... I like... Nothing. Let me see a notebook. I would like... Let me... I'd like a break between nothing and let... Yeah, let... I might be able to do it. Sometimes you can't break up lines like that. It doesn't always work because it flows too much together. But it's worth a try. Let's see. Let me see how it was Nothing. Done. Let me see a notebook. Yeah, see, I can, I can, I, I was able to pick the right place, and then I'm going to fade in and fade out, and I'll probably make sure that there's background noise to help cover that up, but I don't Nothing. Want... Let me see a notebook. Yeah, because it's really two distinctive thoughts, you know? I don't want it to just flow into each other and be just all part of the same thing. Um... And give it, give it, give it. There's the cat here. <laughs> she visits a lot. Hello. Or is that monkey? Okay. Uh, give it. Oh, okay, so the next line is actually his. There's a eff sound effect here. Uh... Hmm. You'll do. Hmm. You'll do. Come along. Hmm. Oh, the second one. And... A little bit more space here, and then... I may have to change it. I know that he's basically he's saying sir every one of those times. I have to decide to make sure I get the right sir in the right place because of, you know, it's it's all in the phrasing for the sir. Come characters. along. Stay with me. Come along. Stay with me. Just a second. Come along. Stay with me. I would prefer if he'd said stay with me or stay with me, you know, or stay with me. It's just a little bit different phrasing, but let's see. Come along. Stay with me. That'll be fine. Okay. Now let's see how the sirs go. It's just like with Jun. You know, the sirs can be very expressive if they're done right. And we've got a great actor doing that one. Yeah. He, he knows the value of a sir. He does. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Sir? Nothing. Let me see a notebook. Sir? Give it. Hm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. Sir? Yeah, this one definitely goes here. If you gave me one extra, it would have been two of this one, which is a little bit more, huh? Sir? Give it. Hm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. Stay with me. Okay. 
There's a breath here I don't like. Duh. Duh. Good. If you can't see it, it's sometimes hard to guess which track the extra noises are in. But, um, so we've got this scene. I've made a general noise in the background. I need that and I need, uh, I need, um, a notebook noise because he takes his notebook and flips through it. So we get, whoops. Yes, thank you, computer. Be less noisy. And so I need to basically create another another folder of sound effects. We'll call it 4-2. I might as well just split these up. I may use the same ones over and over again, but it's easier to find them here than to remember what scene I used them in here. So he doesn't have ambience. They're in a house. Um... In a Victorian house, the best ambience I could come up with, apart from, is, is the fireplace, or like at Jane's house, she's got a canary, except, of course, at night when the canary would be covered up and let the bird go to sleep. No mad relatives screaming from the attic? No. Well, in this case, I do have the maid crying in the next room, so I have to go to my people noises, and I need first just sort of a muffled crowd? <laughs> Not that much. I just need a few people. <laughs> Not that much. Um, that's outdoors. <laughs> Not that much. I may have to create... That might work. I might actually be able to do something with that. I'll, be, I'll put it in the other room so that it's not particularly audible, but it's got a background there. I should have a woman crying in here somewhere. Okay. I can mix these two so it's not because they're both a little too short to go the whole scene and I want them I want to have something go the whole scene okay that's enough for people noises then I need paper which is under home um you talked once about making a Franken file about uh, just a couple of people talking or something. It took me about, oh, 20 minutes to put this together. It's like six seconds, and it, I'm like, good heavens, those don't sound anything like the original file. How did you do that? <laughs> it's all in how you... you, you got to be able to hear it first in your head, kind of. <coughs> Picture the scene and see where the noises are when you're seeing it in your head. Then you can move them around and figure out what to do with them now. I don't hearing want voices that. in your head into an art form. Yes, I can hear voices in my head and make it an art form. Could Let's see. Well, I don't want a quick shuffle through paper. I want a slower look. I know I have it somewhere. Handing. Mm. Ah, that's perfect. Well, what I, what the, the whole point of Drab looking at his notebook is he wants somebody who takes good notes. I mean, it's not made a big point of, but Drab is very picky about who, and, and later on in the same episode, he gets a random constable to help him and is pissed off because this guy has wandered off somewhere. So he's, he's kind of a perfectionist. It's just a character thing. But it is a good... Um, Not what I want. I need something handed over. Let's see. Mm, that's good enough. And, you know, but it's, it's all in how 
generally have, oh, and I also needed, um, I needed a sheet being laid over the corpse. <laughs> There's always one more noise. Oh, wait, that's in home noises too, under cloth. Let's see, something bed making. That's good enough. It's also sometimes being able to picture something else being used as the right effect because, you know, you're going, how do I get this noise? And you have to break it down into, well, that's a clickety click sound with some metal. So maybe I could use a latch for it. And this is a, that's a, a rhythmic sound of maybe I can find a clock or something, you know, I mean, it's just breaking noises down into pieces is always tricky. And, yeah, okay, oops, no, I went up one more, FX42, let's get these all up, I open one, and then I import all the others, so they're all in the same file for me, and then I highlight them all, make them all mono, that's a key shortcut, did we go over key shortcuts, everybody, I mean, to everybody's satisfaction? So I can show you how to put them in. Um, I remember we talked about it, and I think I did, but I want to make sure. Just let me know in the comments if you're still waiting on that. Uh, so first off, uh, well, actually, first off, I should start with the murmuring and the crying. Oh, well, the crying is very obvious. That's those two bottom tracks. Um, let's put, oh, I need to make this into save as edited file because I forgot just so I keep my original file hopefully intact I've got copies of it but it's always easier if I had to oh I did do that okay good thank you Yargion um, so first off I'll paste the murmuring now again with a sound like this I'm not gonna copy and paste from end to end if I need to lengthen it because um, there's a fade out and you don't want it to fade out and fade back in instead I'll copy and paste in the middle so that the 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 change comes somewhere else and it doesn't make a, a distinctive end there's nothing more telling no. than when there's nothing more telling than when a sound effect it, it just sort of fades out and then fades back in again okay great and I'm going to low pass filter this so that, uh, well, we'll go with the 1000 so that it sounds like it's in another room. And I'm also going to take the volume down. This is just the suggestion that there's, there's, this is a crime scene. There's a lot of investigation going on and I'm putting it off. To Looks the like side. the poor fellow was beaten to death. I'll know more. When Actually, I think I want to take that down even a little more. And we're going to we'll make the police surgeon off to the left as well. So we'll be the crying. So let me save this. Grab my crying files. It's okay for me to, to cut them out of there because I'm only going to use them the once. And again, I think I'm going to, I only need one of each. So I'm going to take this one and well, we'll just, we'll go ahead and it's, it breaks up enough. So it's not going to sound like there's a gap. That's the good thing about something like this because there already are gaps. It's when you've got a solid sound that suddenly goes away that you have to worry about it. And I'm going to low pass the hell out of this and also take it way down. So again, she's also outside. And that's that. Um, the coroner is going to be at, oh, night, David, have a good night. 50% left, so I'm going to put the sheet noise at his level. I can just get rid of the female now. I don't need that again. 
and I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this up a little bit because I want to make sure it's heard above. Was beaten to death. I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Maid found him when she came in to clean up. In I'm going to give this a little bit more space here. I want a little break between that and the, the, the inspector and Fields conversation. Um, hmm. Take him down just a skosh. Okay, and they're going to be a little bit more over here. I want Drab closer to center because he is a more main character. And, but, so that way we've got a little bit of distinction here. And then I'm just going to put the notebook sound in. Let's see, let's take the coroner down, or the police surgeon, and then take, actually take Fields down. I like having what I'm working on directly down near the bottom so I'm not scrolling back and forth to, to match up where things are. But these ones, because they're just background tracks, can just sit there. So I can put the notebook one in here. Nothing. Let me see a notebook. Which will go here. And we'll just put it on this level and I get over here to the um, okay now I'm mixing these two sounds because I want it to get handed to him which is sort of this I don't like the whole sound though I think I'm just going to use that much to have it handed to him because otherwise it's much too much of a production. <coughs> and then I might move his language, his voice down a bit after he looks it over. Let's see how it sounds. Hmm. Yeah. Let's give him a moment to make a production out of it. I mean, he's also being a little bit intimidating by demanding to see this and stuff. So, uh, and then he can hand it. Then he's, he's not dealing with it anymore. Okay. Let's see how this sounds from the start. Looks like the poor fellow was beaten to death. I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Maid found him when she came in to clean up, Inspector Drab, sir. That her next door? Uh, yes, sir. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Sir? Nothing. Let me see a notebook. Sir? Give it. Oh, whoops. I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> uh... See, that's what happens. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, I promise. Uh, we'll take that away, but I'll move it, put it here. Um, Let me see your notebook. Sir? Give it. Hm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. Stay with me. Yeah, I want a little bit more set noise. I want a little bit more blank here for both of them. Hmm. You'll do. And I actually want... Uh, yes, sir. Head one. I want to add a little bit more space here before this line. Of course, that means I have to move these down as well. It's a little trickier when you're adding space. you got to make sure you move everything that follows, yep, which is That's why her next door? a lot of uh, times... Yes, sir. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Sir? Nothing. Let me see your notebook. Sir? Give it. Hm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. 
Stay with me. Okay, and I'm gonna... These are a little obtrusive. I'm gonna take them down a little notch and I'm gonna low pass filter them. That'll take a little bit of that shiny edge off of the sound. So now uh, it's like... Give it. Hmm, you'll do. Sir. It makes it a lot more under. Now I'm losing the crowd. And I think since it's really close to the end, I'm just going to move it up so that... Because I'm going to fade in here anyway. Usually, I mean, Sir? if it's, if it's going to go along. much longer... Stay with me. But that's going to fade out really fast, and I don't like that. So I think I will actually add a little bit more. I just want to make sure it's not going anywhere. That it's not going to... Like, I, I, I hate fading things out too quickly without having that the, the option of fading it out slower because then your transitions sound bad. That's why I usually leave five seconds at the beginning, five seconds at the end. Now... The next thing I'm going to do, and the last thing for this scene, and then we'll be done for this one, is, of course, room tone. So I mix it all to a track. And as I always say, I use, I use room tone oops, on a track of its own because I, I like to be able to, to, I don't like doing permanent to anything if I have a choice. If I, if I end up having to go back over this scene and replace a line, it's a lot easier to replace it and then redo the room tone than replace it and have to do extra room tone on one line or anything silly like that. Whoops, that was the wrong number. One, no, not amplify. Okay, you can tell I'm getting to the end of my day. <laughs> 1,000. Okay, so here's how it sounds now. And it's pretty much all together. Looks like the poor fellow was beaten to death. I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Maid found him when she came in to clean up, Inspector Drab, sir. That's her next door? Uh, yes, sir. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Sir? Nothing. Let me see your notebook. Sir? Give it. Hmm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. Stay with me. Okay, I am... This is a little bit loud. Um, and a little bit... I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Made for... There's some sound in this track that I'm not liking. I want to just make sure I fade it out. So that it doesn't, it, so it's Done not. To death. I'll know more when I have him cleaned. Oh, and you can better take a you closer the look. Map. Good, I'm glad you were able to find that. Maid found him when she came in to clean up, Inspector Drab. Now something like this that I just changed, I just ran a high pass filter on it to get some of the noise out and faded it out. That's not going to change so much that I'm going to redo the room tone for that. <laughs> if I moved it in the track one direction or another that would be different but that's a small enough change that i'm not especially because it's under a voice that i'm not going to worry about it but note she is not a perfectionist <laughs> no I'm, like i said I, I don't have to do that anyway you want to listen to the scene sure okay hold on back to the beginning all of the intricate bits the magic comes together <laughs> looks like the poor fellow was beaten to death I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Oh, man. Maid found him when she came in to clean up, Inspector Drab, sir. That's her next door? Uh, yes, sir. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Sir? Oh, man. Nothing. <laughs> Let me see your notebook. Sir? Give it. Hm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. Stay with me. So. Wow. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. So. Random odd bits that have nothing to do with each other. Kaboom. Hi, this is Greg. Yep. And for that, I can then... Uh, <coughs> I save. I mix. 
I copy and then I unmix and close so that I can then paste it into the, the uh, final file. Now, I'm going to, there's not really much to fade out on the Annie track. There's just that background dog track. Uh, but, and then I can fade in, I'm going to fade in so that the, uh, we begin more or less with the, ins with the voice of the, uh, doctor, uh, about there. And then we'll just pull this over as a sample and see how it sounds. First Jane, next. She takes less time to get rolling. Looks like the poor fellow was beaten to death. I'll know more when I have him cleaned and can take a closer look. Maid found him when she came in to clean up, Inspector Drab, sir. That her next door? Uh, yes, sir. Third one this week. All the money in the world won't stop death. Sir? Nothing. Let me see your notebook. Sir? Give it. Hm, you'll do. Sir? Come along. Stay with me. Okay. And then we go back over to Gerald, but we will do that one tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, the police are going to be there all night. <laughs> Excuse me. And so got a good start on episode four. And as I said, hopefully I'll get the professor's voice on Wednesday and I can get uh, episode two finalized and then we can have two and three out. And I'll, there's a professor scene in four as well, but I'd like to get two and three out. Anyway, uh, yeah, and... Do you see how effective even a scene that's primarily sound effects can be, but you got to keep it tight and, you know, so that it's really clear what's happening. The big thing, the big no-no is you don't want to lose your audience. Yeah, the police work around the clock when it's a rich guy involved, at least. And <laughs> so... Don't just pay for your justice. Well, the... the uh, you, his death from last episode was is the ending of, of the previous episode, which is this. <laughs> we were having a lot of fun with this one last, yesterday. Right at the end here. Just quite what might come out, eh? Daniel, be cruel to me. Have you been a very bad girl today? What? Yes, very bad. Bring me the birch. And I will be worse. What? Ow! I say, stop that. Bad boy. <gasps> bad boy. <gasps> bad boy. <laughs> 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 okay, if we start playing the 70s soundtrack, I'm going to think this is another type of theater. No, no, Victorians were so messed up. Anyway, so, yeah, that's that's how he was beaten to death. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah. And we'll pick up with that tomorrow. And meanwhile, of course, in the same episode, Gerald was getting the sales pitch on getting a clockwork mistress because they can't do anything wrong. Mm. Oh no! Yeah, well, I think it's hilarious. I I'm always surprised by how well I can make. I, I write these scenes without thinking again about. Uh, oh yes, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up now. Thank you. Yeah, I write these scenes without actually thinking about how they're gonna come together. So it's always a challenge when I get to them and have to make them actually work. But yeah, let's go ahead and wrap up and uh, thank you all for coming to the stream and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow and hopefully my car will be fixed tomorrow. So, um...